To understand what is going to happen to the Earth when the Sun dies first, you must understand how a star like the Sun is created. Stars start their existence as massive agglomerations of gas, mostly hydrogen with a sprinkling of helium and a few other elements. Gas is mass, so when it is gathered in one spot, it collapses in on itself under its own weight. That creates pressure on the interior of the protostar, which heats up the gas until it gets so hot that the electrons get stripped off the atoms and the gas becomes charged, a phenomenon known as ionized or plasma. The hydrogen atoms, each carrying a single proton, fuse with other hydrogen atoms to become helium, which has two protons and two neutrons. The fusion releases energy in the form of light and heat, which generates outward pressure and prevents the gas from collapsing any further. And this is a star. There's more than enough hydrogen to continue this process for billions of years, but eventually, nearly all of the hydrogen in the sun's core is going to be fused into helium. When that happens, the sun will no longer be able to produce as much energy and will start to collapse under its own weight. That weight can generate enough pressure to fuse the helium as it did with the hydrogen at the beginning of the sun's life. However, whatever hydrogen is remaining on the core's surface will fuse, generating a little additional energy and allowing the sun to keep shining. That helium core, though, will start to collapse in on itself. When it does, it releases energy, though not through fusion. Rather, it merely heats up because of greater pressure. That release of energy brings in more light and heat, making the sun even brighter. Sadly, the energy also causes the sun to bloat into a red giant. Red giants are red due to their surface temperatures being lower than stars like the sun. In spite of this, red giants are considerably larger than their hotter counterparts. A 2008 research study done by astronomers Klaus Peter Schroeder and Robert Kanan Smith estimated that the sun will become so big that its outermost surface layers will reach about 108 million miles out, which will cause it to swallow the planets Mercury, Venus, and Earth. The whole process of transforming into a red giant will occur over 5 million years, a mere flash in the sun's lifespan. Right now, the sun's luminosity is increasing by about 10% every billion years. The habitable zone, where liquid water can reside on a planet's surface, currently is between about 0.95 and 1.37 times the circumference of the Earth's orbit. That zone will continue to expand outward. At the point the Sun becomes ready to turn into a red giant, Mars will have been inside the zone for a considerable period of time. During this time, Earth will be getting hotter and transforming into a sauna. The oceans will be evaporating and turning into hydrogen and oxygen. As the water evaporates, the hydrogen will drift to space and the oxygen will interact with surface rocks. Nitrogen and carbon dioxide are likely to become the major elements of the atmosphere, just like Venus is today. Even Mars is unlikely to be an inhabitable planet. After the Sun turns into a giant, the inhabitable zone in the solar system will move out to between 49 and 70 astronomical units. Even Neptune in its current orbit would probably become too hot for life. The place to live would be Pluto or one of the surrounding dwarf planets, comets, or ice-rich asteroids in the Kuiper belt. But by the time Earth is a pile of ash, the temperatures on Pluto will be similar to our own planet's average temperatures, today thus making Pluto the most valuable real estate in our solar system. The end of planet Earth could also lead to life in remote regions of the solar system. Pluto will be balmy and brimming, with the same varieties of complex organic compounds that existed when life first evolved on Earth. Researchers believe Pluto will probably have a thick atmosphere and a liquid water surface. Collectively, the world's from comet-like space rocks to dwarf planets like Eris and Sedna. In this new habitable zone, we'll have three times as much surface area as all four of the inner solar system planets combined. Stars, such as the Sun, lose mass as they age, mainly because of the solar wind. Planets that orbit the Sun will gradually expand. It will not occur quickly enough to save the Earth, but if Earth manages to survive the Sun's giant phase, it will find itself orbiting a hot white dwarf barely larger than our planet. For eons, Earth will continue to orbit the Sun. But, eventually, as the Sun cools and dims to a black dwarf, Earth's orbit will decay due to the emission of gravitational waves. Our once blue planet will spiral into the dead Sun, a grand finale as the solar system goes dark forever. Fortunately, the Sun doesn't have the final say in what happens to Earth, because the Sun won't become a red giant for another 5 billion years, and a lot can happen in that time. Gravity keeps the planets in orbit around the Sun but it also attracts the planets to each other. Although much smaller than the Sun's pull, these forces between planets tweak their orbits over millions of years, making them flex and drift. 
it's possible that these flexing orbits could cause the solar system to destabilize and eject planets, including Earth. Alternatively, while other stars typically stay light years away from the solar system, it's possible one could drift nearby in the next few billion years. The solar system may be a well choreographed waltz of planets, but the galaxy is more like a rock concert where the stars mosh in a circle. The gravity of even a small star or black hole could ruin orbits and kick out planets if it gets too close. The future fate of the Earth is uncertain, only time will reveal. The one thing astronomers are confident of is that any of our far distant descendants will not want to live long enough to know because it is not going to be a peaceful end to their lives. Like, comment, subscribe.